you up. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. My big hearted, my big hearted pastor. Um, I told him he, uh, he kind of put tears in my eyes, you know, when he went over. That's when I first began. That was back 15 years ago. And me and my wife decided to come and sing because I didn't know what she was saying. Really. Um, that's one of my favorites of hers. So to my spiritual father and my spiritual mom, God bless you. Thank you for having us. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to say what thus said to all. Their wives, yeah. oh, yes. oh, yes. family, yes, and friends. Yeah. It's just good to be here. Yes, Don't really like to hold up anybody, so let's go straight to them. Come on. To All, the right. All right. If you would, travel with me to the Old Testament Psalms. Help us. Help us. And we're going to go skip forward to go to John, but we're going to look at Psalms 24. Help us. Help us. Verses 4 and 5. Right. And we're going to skip to John the 20th chapter. Verses 24 to 28. When you said, when you find it, please, ma'am, please, sir, say, I'm in the house. I'm in the house. Amen. I'm reading Psalms 24, 4 and 5 from the NIV version. It says this. The one who has clean hands All right. All right. and a pure heart, All right. who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god, mm. they will receive blessings from the Lord All right. and vindication from God their Savior. Right. Go with me to John, the 20th chapter, All right. beginning with verse 24. Here, here, page this time. I don't want to leave anyone behind. John, the 20th chapter, beginning with verse 24. Well, well. All right. But Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, mm -hmm. was okay. not with them when Jesus came. All right. well, well. The other disciples therefore said unto him, right. We have seen the Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he said unto them, yeah. Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side. I will not believe. Verse 26 and after seven days after a week passed his disciples were with him and Thomas was with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said, peace be unto you. Then said he to Thomas, reach hither thy finger. And behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side. Yeah. And be not faithless, but believe. But believe. Last verse. And Thomas answered and said unto him, right. My Lord and my God. Amen. 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 All right. All right. Let us pray. This heavenly Father, we just come before you to seek a little word from you. you. Speak now, Holy Spirit. And give us a uh, a word to take us throughout our journey. Yes. Bless everyone that's here. Yes. Bless everyone that's that's under the sound of my voice. Yes. We yes. give you all the honor and all the glory. Yes. It's in your son Jesus Christ's name we pray. Yes. Everyone say amen. 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 Right, if I can talk to you on this we're subject we're with a subtopic, topic with a subtopic, the to topic is Worshipping with dirty hands. <laughs> Worshipping with dirty hands. <laughs> with a subtopic, it just won't work. <laughs> Worshipping with dirty hands. <laughs> it just won't work. In a place called Vienna in the spring of 1947, all right, all right. there was some seemingly barbaric behavior in a good community. All right, all right. Vienna is the home of Beethoven yeah, right. and of Mozart. Right. 
And in this town, there was a doctor by the name of Inez Samuels, all right, all right. who was a Jewish doctor, which was living under the pressure and the strain of what the nation then called the Holocaust. All right. All right. All right. At the time, he was the lead surgeon at the Vienna General Hospital, one of the leading hospitals of the 19th century. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, he, he found himself frustrated with his profession because one out of six women admitted for delivery of a newborn child, one out of six of them end up dying. One by one, he and his team of surgeons was conducting autopsy, trying to figure out with their own CSI investigation that what, what was taking place, that so many babies was dying and their mothers on the delivery table. Right. They came up with a disease they call um, labor fever. All right. All right. But while they was in labor, their they bodies was opening up and, and it was acceptable to the elements. And while it is that this team of doctors was under the duress and stress of having to conduct all those autopsies. Well, well, well. And one day in the middle of a war zone, they were in a panic fleet moving from the autopsy room to the delivery room. All right. All right. All right. So one room would, would have bodies that, that had died, and the other side of the room, it would have bodies that was holding new life. Maybe some of you could get this in your spiritual imagination. They were conducting internal exams and conducting autopsies in the same room. On one table was somebody ready to bring new life. And on the next table was somebody who just lost their life. They, they was trying to figure out, ladies and gentlemen, why it is the one who was carrying life is dying and why the one who was dead has died. Something strange has happened now because they were on the table right next to each other. They were shifting without any pause from internal exams to autopsy, from autopsy to the delivery. And the one reality is that their hands had pus and blood from their bodies. And they took these same contaminated hands and put them in open wounds that had a potential for new life. The problem, people of God, is that between the autopsy and the delivery, nobody is washing their hands. In 1947, they had not even considered the transfer of bacteria. Yeah. Nobody at that moment had known that bacteria was something that could spread from the hands and from the environment. Yeah. So whenever someone died, they would chalk it up to blame it on labor fever and other things that were in the environment. Yeah. They would never take responsibility for themselves that maybe it's something I done. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it sounds familiar to the time we now live in. That nobody wants to take responsibility for what they're doing. They always want to blame it on the environment. So we don't try, we don't say anything about losing a generation of young black men to the streets. We just say they didn't have a role model. We, we don't say anything about our children after they go off to college, but after they go off to college now wanting to be part of the church because you turned them off by showing them church was more important than they was. No, nobody wants to say the only people who can who can find you can find in the church are those in fact who are looking for